Amy Dufresne, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me, Jonathan. Yeah, Amy, it, it's been a pleasure um, getting to know you more over the last several years as we've worked, worked together um, at HRCI, and I'm excited to have the opportunity to chat with you about your perspective on really the whole field of, of HR, uh, what, what's going well and it is exciting for HR right now, but also what the future holds. Um, so I think that'll be a great discussion. But also, uh, I'm really excited to share with the listeners a little bit more about HRCI and give them a chance to understand the transformation that's been happening and your role in, in helping uh, move that forward. So that's all part of what we're going to be discussing today. For the listeners, Amy Dufresne is the CEO of the HR Certification Institute. Before joining HRCI, Amy spent more than 25 years as an innovator of human capital strategies for progressive organizations. She also serves on the Wall Street Journal CEO Council as a member of the CEO Roundtable and a member of the advisory board of the Columbia Lighthouse for the Blind and the Next Concept Human Resource Association. She holds her doctorate from the George Washington University, an MBA, an MA from Marymount University, and a BS from Hood College. Um, and Amy, you have been at HRCI for a long time, uh, first as director and or executive director, and then tra uh, transitioning into the CEO role. Um, anything you would like to add for the listeners uh, before we jump on into the conversation? Well, you can see, John, that I'm, I am totally a learning and HR junkie from my background of spending a lot of time in the classroom. Um, I also hold a certification from HRCI, um, and I'm very passionate about uh, certification and continuing to evolve and upskill yourself. So I think being at HRCI has been a wonderful opportunity for me to continue to evolve um, not only my passion, but instill that passion into other folks who are interested in elevating themselves from an HR perspective. So I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Excellent. Um, so as we start off today, I think we'll start with kind of the big picture question. Um, right now in the world, it's an interesting time. Uh, we, we're, we're facing a global pandemic. Uh, here in the U.S., we have social and political strife, um, racial tensions. Uh, we're recording this on uh, Juneteenth, uh, which is a, a really important day to recognize and remember within the context of, you know, everything that's happening in the U.S. right now. Um, the Black Lives Matters movement and the protests that are happening, all, all these things are happening all around us while people are working from home or they've lost their jobs. Um, it, it's, it's such an interesting time. So with all of that in mind, you know, the, the context, what, what do you see the biggest challenge being for organizational leaders and HR leaders right now? So I think the biggest challenge uh, that I am hearing over and over and over again is um, anxiety and uncertainty. Those are really um, the challenges that, that I'm hearing about. Um, I, uh, just put my hands on um, a couple of uh, briefings from the Harvard Business Review where they really are focusing, focused on anxiety and uh, leadership in times of crisis and great change. So there are two, one is, um, you know, more of a, a smaller article. One is sort of a, a compilation of a lot of different um, articles that they've, that HBR has written over time um, in this, in, in times of crisis and what leaders have done to uh, embrace um, the, the, the anxiety and unrest in crisis situations. Um, because I think, you know, we, we hear this is that a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. And I think this is really causing organizations to be a lot more innovative than they ever have before. Um, there's a, uh, you know, we, we know that from, based on our long history uh, as, um, and, and assessing organizations, um, we know that there have been some really great companies that started when we were um, in a crisis. Uh, companies like Disney, 
like IBM, like HP, like Trader Joe's, like Microsoft. So these big name companies that started when there was this time of anxiety and, and crisis. And so I think these are all the things that are facing leaders right now. Um, and, you know, it's, it's sort of taking one step at a time, not getting too far ahead of yourself, but really um, knowing that there is, you know, kind, kind of this future that's going on out there and, and that you're working towards it. Um, but I think, you know, being in the midst of a pandemic and um, the civil unrest that's happening right now is really giving us an opportunity to um, rethink priorities personally and priorities organizationally. Um, and so I think that this is uh, a, a really introspective time for us to really embrace that anxiety and embrace this time of opportunity to think about things in a deeper way to evolve and innovate. Yeah, I love that. I, in our pre-discussion before we started uh, recording, we were talking a little bit, you know, just about how, really to your point, how this is a chance for us to slow down a little bit, um, to have more time to ourselves or with our families, where we can still be productive and do the work that needs to be done, but, you know, commutes are gone for a lot of people. Um, and, and we just have the, the chance to, uh, to really reflect. And that's such an important thing always, um, but it's probably extra important during a time of crisis. And the fact that we have that opportunity now where we're not, you know, we're, there's still the grind. People, you know, people are still trying to be productive and organizations are struggling and, and challenged um, to innovate in this space. But in this dynamic, we, we do have a little bit of opportunity to really sit back and reflect and really carefully consider, like you said, our priorities. And that's just so key. And sometimes that can get lost in the hustle and bustle of just getting, going from place to place, all the travel, all right. the meetings. And, and now we have that opportunity. So I love that. And I, and I hope we don't waste that uh, because it's so key. And I hope that people will also recognize the role that that reflection plays so that even when we come out of the crisis, uh, that leaders can continue to take time to quiet their minds, to take, a, to pause, to step back, where they can consider things uh, more strategically and, and carefully uh, as they work to move forward in positive directions. Uh, I, I think you, you also mentioned, you know, in terms of the innovation that is being forced upon organizations right now. I mean, you really have no choice. You either have to be creative and innovate or, you know, you're going to go out of business right now. And, That's right. That's and so, that's such a, that again is such a good opportunity. And it, it seems to me, you know, in, in my kind of more limited um, space, you know, you, you, you move, you're around with the movers and shakers um, in, in organizational leadership and HR on a day to day basis, you know, as part of your role as CEO um, of a major, you know, HR certification body uh, and learning organization. Uh, I, I'm much more limited, of course, in, in those interactions. But man, I've seen just in the last three months, the, it, it seems to me the uptick of people just reconsidering what they considered to always just be normal and um, what they took for granted as what should be done. And now they're just being forced to reconsider what technologies are we using? How are we interacting with each other? You know, was all of that travel really necessary? You know, <laughs> um, all those right. types of things, right. it's, it's so vital and it, it really, it truly is a good opportunity for us right now. Right. I, I couldn't agree more. I just, I think it is that even companies who said our employee base can never work from home, period. And then they realized, okay, do we want to be productive? Do we want to have business continuity? or not. So <laughs> there was no choice put in front of us. So um, I think that, you know, CEOs who I talked to who as, as late as November and December, who said the most innovative thing that we're doing is having a meeting free Friday. And I go, that was so <laughs> like 10 years ago. I can't, I mean, I can't even wrap my brain around that. And he said, we never, and they were in Chicago. This is a huge multinational corporation. And they, um, 
he said, we, we would never, we, people can't work from home. There's just, it's just impossible. So I think, okay, <laughs> you know, now, now what? Um, so I think we're really seeing that, um, that happen. And, you know, when I think about what's, what's occurring right now within organizations, this has really hit HR particularly hard. And for the, the folks that I'm talking to, to people, um, who are working seven days a week, 18 hours a day. They work in the healthcare industry um, and just trying to keep their employees safe, their clients safe and keep the doors open because they have to, right? Um, I talked to somebody who works, uh, he's a CHRO in a food distribution business. Gotta get, gotta get people food got to get restaurants that were opening or doing sort of the, a modified uh, delivery schedule or serving schedule, got to get them food. So he was working seven days a week. Um, and I talked to a CHRO that right before um, COVID-19 really hit hard in the United States, uh, she works for a government contracting organization and she, they had had um, a, a, uh, a situation happened at one of their work sites um, in the Middle East. And a lot of people, when that happened, said, I just want to get home. I, this was way more than I signed up for. And um, I just, I need to be with my family right now. And then COVID-19 happened and she was trying to get people home. There were no flights. People were getting stuck in countries for which they didn't speak the language. Um, and so I've had conversations with HR leaders that are doing that. And then I've had conversations with HR leaders that are delivering news about people who are, you know, their jobs have been eliminated or they're furloughed or, um, you know, their salaries have been reduced, their benefits are changing, um, or, and they're, they're making these decisions really quickly. Mm. And HR typically has this, has had this very, um, more of a rule book, I'll call it some some really fundamental things, you know, privacy and safety and security that were sort of, you know, it was kind of a given. And this has really put HR at that epicenter of, um, oh my gosh, that rule book that we had, forget it. Employee privacy, forget it. I mean, we're we have to test people. We've got to make sure that they're well, that they can come into work, that they're not going to infect everybody if we're in a meatpacking plant. I mean, it's it's really shifted this. And then, you know, we had the civil unrest that happened and, um, you know, the, the emergence of, uh, of a more focus on diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, which, you know, HR has, this has been, again, a foundational effort that HR is focused on ensuring that people are are belong, they belong, they fit in where they are, that they're welcome. Um, and all of this has, has emerged and has, um, you know, created yet another, you know, another big topic for HR to, to focus on. And important, these are all very important employee safety, family safety, diversity, belonging, um, you know, all of those things on top of sort of this this idea of business continuity when yeah, all of this yeah. is happening and um, and HR is right at the epicenter more so than any other function within the business. This has fallen on HR's shoulders and, you know, HR is, has, um, has led the way and they're, they're leading the way, but it's, it's hard for folks to stay positive um, when they're so, when, when it's just, you know, the, this grind of, of a lot of big things that are happening within their companies. Yeah, and I, and I think when you start to layer these, these different elements, so we have a pandemic, and then we have the George Floyd moment and Black Lives Matter um, protests, and you have uh, all of the civil unrest and the, and the, the, the struggles around race, so, so leaders are trying to figure out, well, how do we balance the urgent, like really urgent needs of the organization um, just to keep the doors open, keep the paychecks coming, um, like you said, business continuity and just making sure that things continue to happen. How do we balance that with the very real need to address the anxiety, the stress, the fears right. for, of uncertainty for, for employees anyways, you know, just given the pandemic, but then 
you know, how do you, how do you also take the time to have those converse, those, those critical and very sensitive conversations around diversity and inclusion, race relations, um, you know, pausing to, to listen to um, those employees that are, are uh, people of color in your organization that are experiencing something, you know, that's even an, a heightened level of anxiety than maybe right. you or I that's might right. be feeling, right? That's um, right. That, that is so, there's so many things to be balancing right now that's more right. than normal. And, that's right. and, and you, you said it, it, it tends to fall on HR. Um, and hopefully we have capable um, leaders in those positions to be able to carry the torch and, and move things forward in productive ways. That's right. That's right. And I think it's, you know, we're, we're coupled, you, you couple all of that with the need to have this communication and connectivity within your organization, um, you know, which is an element of all of those things um, that, that you mentioned and we, we've sort of talked about, but how do you, how do you have these conversations on Zoom? How do you, mm. how do you make, have people feel connected to one another um, when you're not sitting in front of, of each other having these, these conversations about, um, you know, all, all the, the topics that, that we've talked about. It's, you know, it's sort of the, the amplification of all of this. It's really, it's, I think it's challenging all of us. It's challenging all of us to be, to be better and to think differently about how we're doing things. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, um, and, and, and so, yeah, it's very interesting. And, and it, you know, as, as I monitor the news and talk to people like you, leaders in the industry and, and, and various thought leaders, um, you know, what, come, what comes to the surface over and over and over again is that really some people um, are really grasping this moment and it's a lot, it's really, it's hard, it's a lot of work, but, they, but they're doing the best they can and they're grasping this moment and they're, they're doing great things for their organization. Um, of course, though, not everyone is doing that and there's, there's just as many examples of organizations that are kind of falling flat on their face um, and, and having missteps, um, nobody expects you know leaders to be perfect, and everyone knows, especially in a heightened time you know like this of anxiety and uh, challenge, that you know there are going to be missteps. Um, but this this is this is demonstrating, I think, it, it, it's it's forcing leaders to show their true colors, their priorities, and some seem to be up to the challenge and others don't. And right. I, I think that's, that's, that's a good kind of sifting process that we might be going through right now. Right. Um, and and I, I think th those leaders that are really stepping to the plate and, and doing the best they can and trying to be transparent and communicate with their employees, recognizing the, the challenges that their employees are having and trying to be supportive of them, you know, th those, those leaders will come out of this even stronger. Those organizations will come out That's of this right. even stronger with better, with stronger employee um, commitment to the organization, um, heightened levels of motivation, productivity. So what do you see uh, as the greatest concern over the next, right. three, the next three months? We're, we're kind of right in the middle of it. I don't know about you, but here in Utah, um, people are kind of treating it like things are just completely back to normal. Things have opened back up, even while we continue to have a spike. So, so <laughs> the, the number of cases and the number of deaths continue to go up like this, but people are like, ah, we're done. So they're just you know, going out. And uh, I don't know if it's like that back on the East Coast and in the DC area, um, but certainly we're not out of the woods yet and, and we're still in the middle of this. So, so what do the next 90 days look like? Right. Well, I think, you know, in, in, as they call it, the DMV, the District, Maryland and Virginia, we're, we are still extremely cautious. Our, our uh, kind of peak happened about a month ago. Um, so the number of cases that we have are coming down and people, you know, I, when I go out to a grocery store. Um, people are wearing masks, they're wearing gloves, there's still a lot of focus here on um, let's 
keep that down. But I know that's not the way that it is everywhere. I think people are kind of over it. Um, and they're wanting to get out and they're wanting to do things and they're sort of thinking it's done. And um, so I think, you know, kind of when I think about um, what's happening over the next 90 days, you think about this, bring people back to work, um, but creating a, a safe and healthy place where f people are comfortable coming back. Um, you know, in, in a lot of, our, you know, in, at least in areas where there's people take public transportation a lot to get to work, um, there's a lot of fear around that. So employers are having to, you know, sort of um, be more, um, you know, individualistic in how do you um, how, help people to, to be comfortable coming to work so that they're protected, their families are protected, and they feel safe, and they're not worried. Um, so I think that's an area where, um, you know, HR is very focused on, you know, continuing to have the, these conversations, transparency around what's going on within the organization, I think is really important. Um, you know, we've talked a little bit about this, but kind of the time management, um, people having, um, it, you know, when you're working from home, it is, it becomes, that line becomes even more blurred. Um, I think for, you know, I have several uh, team members at HRCI that work remotely. We have folks that are all over, uh, all over the world, actually. And so they're, they're working in their own home office. So it's, now having, it's understanding the challenges that they have when we're all back in the office together and how do, how do we create that connectivity for those folks in, in a longer term? So these are, you know, kind of 90 yeah. days and, and beyond. Um, I think that, um, you know, having uh, employees, you know, giving them access to, to information is really um, important for, uh, for us. Um, I think it's that the fear of the unknown. Um, at HRCI, we did a survey of um, some of our uh, certification holders and people who are in our learning space, and we had a have, had a very good uh, response to this. And so we talked about what are the greatest are the, what are they over the next ninety days. So. Uh, there's still a um, concern of HR practitioners that, you know, it's bringing those people who are on furloughed back, but when can we do that? When will we be financially back to where we were or to a place where we can start bringing people back? Um, and or if we can't, what, it, what are the next things that we're going to have to do? Um, more layoffs or start that layoff process. Um, I think that's really, uh, you know, something that is important. Um, we, you know, in some of the things that, that we talked later, they asked for and wanted coaching for unconscious bias, um, you know, around this uh, diversity inclusion. Um, how do we um, make sure that in our work, our places, we're not creating this unconscious bias. And so, you know, bringing that and emerging that forward is important. Um, and this new normal that we're in, how do we, how, do, how what is it? What is the new normal? Because I think everybody sort of talked about it, but what is it? And is it going to be that it is just that this new normal is continuous change and disruption and so there is not a new normal. Um, and I, you know, when I think about um, some of the things that when I've talked to business leaders over the past 90 days about what they're wanting from HR, it's that they're asking for HR to take the reins and lead, um, not be more, you know, sort of I'm here to serve, but I'm here to lead. Um, being on, walking arm in arm with your business partners, um, who are part of your organization to help them in making these hard decisions uh, for their business. So you bring you bring your business hat that's focused on people part, that human capital part, but that you're walking arm in arm with them to make these really challenging decisions. Um, and you know, I think before before COVID nineteen happened. Um, you know, we were talking about the war for talent and how do we engage people and 
Um, at that point, we know that a lot of people were not engaged with the work that they were doing. They're, they weren't really excited about it. So that likely hasn't changed, right? They're likely not, they're still not excited about the job that they had. But how do, how do we as HR engage those people who are unengaged um, and have, having them to realize that what you're, um, what you are interested in doing, maybe what's in front of you right now and giving you that sort of the inspiration to work towards your aspirational role. And so how do we do that in, in helping um, our employees who, um, you know, are, are unengaged right now and we want to get them kind of back back in the fold, so to speak. So that, there's sort of multi answers to the question of the next 90 days, but also what are business leaders expecting of their right. business partners that are that happen to be in the human capital space? What are they expecting of us? Yeah, and one of the things you said that really resonated with me was this opportunity for HR to step to the plate to really be leaders amidst the crisis. Um, and within the HR um, profession for really a couple decades, there's been this you know, push towards how do we get a seat at the table? How, how, how can we be seen as more um, relevant to the core strategic planning of the business and, and all of these different elements? Um, this is an opportunity. I mean, HR is front and center right now. And this is an opportunity right. for, for HR leaders to really step forward and to demonstrate how crucial, how vital they are to the success of the organization. Um, and, I, and I hope we don't miss that because really, you know, we, we don't wish pandemics or civil unrest or any of that kind of um, strife on, on anyone or any organization. But when we're in the midst of the crisis, um, it, it, it can be an opportunity. And I would love to see the HR profession emerge from all of this with a heightened stature and with, with an awareness of, of leaders across different divisions and functions recognizing this is crucial, this is vital. We need to have them at the table being an important part of the decision-making and the discussion um, and not simply a service center um, that helps us take care of our employees. Other right, thoughts the, the on- the transactional, yeah, yeah, that transactional nature is, you know, HR has that seat. They have the ability to lead organizations and, um, you know, this, this is the time, this is HR's time. And um, I think this is an amazing time to be in HR. I think it's a hard time to be in HR, harder than any job that's out there. Um, and being a healthcare worker, of course, it's, that's, I'm, I'm, you know, if you're working on the COVID-19 situation, I can't even imagine that. But, you know, so I think HR is right up there. It's right up there with the, with the tough jobs that there are to have. The job, HR was hard before all of this happened. It's, it's now even more challenging ever. And, you know, the folks that are part of the HRCI community, we have, have had more than a half a million people that have been certified by us in the number in 45 years that we've been doing this. Our, our community has stepped into um, leading this challenge and uh, folks that hold our certifications, the PHRS, PHRG, PHR certifications are really, um, are leading the way for the future of HR. And um, I'm excited to be part of the community and going part of this community that's been, that's in my blood um, because I think that, that HR is, is the business function that can make the most important difference in a business. Yeah, well, I'm glad you, you um, started talking a little bit about what you're doing at HRCI and, and the certificates and, and this, the recent survey you did. Um, of course, in our interactions over the last several years, I'm, I'm privy to a lot of the behind the scenes um, uh, work that's happened at HRCI, but I, I would love to talk with you about your perspective on the transformation that the organization has gone through in, over the last, you know, five plus years, um, because HRCI is a very different organization today than it was five years ago, certainly ten years ago, um, and you're doing some really cool, innovative things 
uh, for the profession, for the certificates, um, and really kind of expanding what, what is meant by an HRCI customer uh, from what was considered traditionally. Um, can you share a little bit about these innovations and transformations that are happening? I'd love to. I'd love to. And and for those of you that don't know, John was on our board for uh, for many years and was a, a fabulous uh, board member who um, has been part of the transformation of HRCI into the organization that we are right now. Um, and I think we were, uh, you know, five years ago, a 45-year-old startup or a 40-year-old startup at that point, right? <laughs> and um, we had uh, great product recognition. People know the PHR and SPHR. They didn't know that HRCI was the engine behind that. And um, the past uh, five years, we've really, um, you know, we've rebranded. Um, we have um, added to our certification base um, a certification for individuals that are looking to break into HR, college and university uh, space, um, for those who are recent graduates who right now is the best time for those recent graduates to get their certification because it is a marker of differentiation on your resume. Um, and you've got the knowledge that you learned in your undergraduate and graduate programs. So this is a great time to um, add that marker of excellence on your resume. Um, and so we've added certifications. We've, um, we have a, uh, two sort of three certifications for those practicing HR outside of the United States. Um, and we have seen significant growth because um, individuals outside the US are very interested in um, upping their game from an HR perspective. And um, in some countries, HR is evolving. And so uh, having a certification is part of your uh, expansion of your knowledge to demonstrate that you know what's what's happening. We've also added um, a way for HR practitioners who may not be ready to take the plunge and get certified to uh, upskill themselves. We've got several learning programs out there um, in both that are um, upskills and learning uh, programs, which are all on our website at hrci.org. We've um, added these markers, you know, these, these additional learnings because as part of getting certified, it's not just preparing and taking the exam, but every three years you've got to get recertified. So you've got to keep that your knowledge fresh. And we know in HR that our, our, as demonstrated even by the past, you know, two weeks, um, you know, HR has yet changed again with um, you know, sort of new legislation that will be coming down very shortly that, that we are, um, you know, responsible for um, ensuring our organizations are abiding to. Um, so we've done, you know, those sorts of things. We've got, we too have a podcast called Inevitable, the Future of Work. Um, we're doing some news flashes uh, once a week that you can find um, on our website and Facebook if you follow us or um, Twitter. So we're pushing things out there. Um, we're, you know, teaming up with organizations because uh, a lot of conferences uh, across uh, the United States at least have been canceled or postponed or turned into virtual. So we're teaming up with organizations that are doing virtual conferences. HR Summer School was one. Um, that we just participated in with Ben Eubanks. Um, it's great. If you go to hrsummerschool.org, there is a ton of free content out there that's high quality. Um, we were a part of that and um, great information. We're also part of Inspire, which will be happening um, just in a couple of days, uh, which will be um, June 20. Second through the 26th. If you're a certified HR person, it's free. Um, and so another great way to, to get some great learning content that's out there. Um, we have, we worked with Dave Ulrich, Libby Sartain, and um, Bill Scheman. We published The Rise of HR. We're on our third iteration of the HR body of knowledge, which is a huge, if you want to know anything, everything about HR, um, it's a big giant book that was published by Wiley. Um, so we've really um, evolved and are helping the HR profession be even better than it is right now. So those are just a few of the things we've done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really cool. And, and you, HRCI has transformed from uh, 
a certification organization to a learning organization that does right. certifications, right? That's right. So, That's right. so certifications are still at the core of what HRCI is all about. And like you said, there's a tremendous brand there. Um, it's, it's the most trusted uh, cert certification in the HR space, um, great accreditation globally, and all of these different elements that make it so valuable for professionals. But there's so much more in that ecosystem that goes around supporting those professionals, the individuals, their organizations, and the profession. And that's, that's what HRCI has grown into um, in recent years, uh, to be a learning organization that supports um, all aspects of professionalization, certification for, for the HR profession, for, for HR leaders. Uh, and that's, that's exciting. That's exciting work. It is. I. Um, I mean, this is. There. There is never a dull moment at HRCI, and I think that as we are continuing to evolve and really listen to um, the community and watch uh, what's out there, we're really adapting and changing, um, and we're innovating. Just like just like the other companies that are, you know, looking to stay relevant, we are too. So it's a, a, an exciting time to lead such a vibrant organization that's really um, doing some, uh, some really fundamental work for, uh, and work that makes a difference for HR leaders. Yeah, and I, and I do also just wanna point to um, really the job that you've done in recent years, because th this transformation isn't, any sort of transformation isn't easy, any change isn't easy, and, and HRCI has faced a huge, amount of change, kind of an existential crisis that occurred um, several years back. And you've been at the head of that, of course, leading um, through kind of the darkness, trying to find, you know, the, 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 the path, you know, out. And, and you've, you've done some really, truly amazing things. And, and not only, you know, are you an expert in the HR space, but uh, as an organizational leader, I think you've demonstrated and shown um, your, your capabilities to build on the passion that you have to help this organization transform and really to help the transformation of the profession. So, so I, I, I really appreciate all the work that you've been doing. Oh, well, th thank you. You know, I, I did not do this alone. I, this is not a, a one person show by any stretch of the imagination. HRCI is a huge community. We have, um, you know, our, our board, um, we have our subject matter experts that are part of, of building our learning um, programs. All, you know, we've got hundreds, hundreds of them. I like, and it, they're amazing. And my team is amazing. They're, they uh, exude the same amount of passion that I do. And so I'm really fortunate to work with them and be a part of, of HRCI. Wonderful. Well, Amy, it has been wonderful talking with you uh, great discussion I, i'm excited you know for the listeners to learn more about hrci but also just everything that we've discussed in terms of the relevance of hr the importance the heightened importance of hr and really what hr leaders can focus their attention on in the coming um, days weeks and months uh, as we try to get through this crisis uh, before we close uh, how can the listeners um, get connected with you learn more about hrci and some of the other cool things that you're doing. Right, so love for you to visit our website um, at hrci.org. Um, we have lots of great resources. We have a weekly newsletter that comes out. So if you go to our website, you can scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and there's a place for you to fill out your name and your email address and you'll get some uh, great communications from us on a weekly basis. Uh, check us, follow us on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, we're on all the, the social media platforms. Um, so I'm, you can reach me. Um, my LinkedIn is, um, is available out there. You can email me at amy.dufrain at hrci.org. And I'm always interested to talk to great HR leaders who are, and, and business leaders who are making a difference. Um, so I, John, I really appreciate this, this opportunity. And, um, you know, thank you for being a, um, a, a valiant supporter of HRCI as a, as a board member and um, as part of this EO Advisory Council. So I really, um, I appreciate all that you're doing for HRCI as well. 
uh, it's it's my pleasure, and it's it's truly been a great um, organization to be connected with. Uh, thanks again, Amy. It's been wonderful talking with you. Um, I hope you and your family are healthy and safe, and uh, have a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks. You too. Take care.